more cards and more unique twists and turns, like for instance, the great houses now and the quests, that brings even more to the table. Now you're attempting to complete quests on your turn and defeat your opponent or gain culture to push yourself to 18. <laughs> From the creators of the game Shaolia Warring States comes the all new expansion Shaolia Great Houses. The game is made by Bad Comet. It plays two to four players and with the expansion a solo player variant and your objective is to lead your province into victory. You can play 1v1 or 2v2 the team variant as well as playing the single player game where you'll be fighting up against the Usurper. The Usurper is basically going to be their own unique faction that is either going to play on hard mode or normal mode in which you're basically going to try to attempt to defeat them over a course of period of rounds where new baddies are going to come out and you have to try to deal with them as you create your tableau. The game involves rolling die, selecting spaces with those die to either gain minerals or other types of resources as well as gold to then build more things onto your tableau, thusly allowing yourself to either defeat your enemies or gain a certain amount of culture that will allow you to win the game. If you can hit either of those objectives first, you'll win. I'll show you all the variants and show you all the new content down below. We'll take a look at it, come up, review it, and you guys can then tell me what you think. Welcome to Shalia Warring States and the expansion Great Houses. Now, if you want a full in-depth explanation for how the game is played, you can take a look at down below, link in the description for the video for the base game. I'm just gonna kind of run over that very, very quickly and then I wanna get into what you get in the new expansion. This is what you're going to be seeing when you're playing the one player mode of the game Shalia Great Houses expansion. Every player is going to get a board whenever you're playing with more than one player however but the setup will remain the same depending on the scenario players are going to get eight gold to start off with and as you can see you'll be getting these big coins here you'll get three die you're going to get this culture track marker that starts at zero and goes to 18 two locked spaces some player is going to start with the starting player token as well as you're going to get two of these hero cards shuffle them up and deal them out at random sometimes you can use them sometimes you can't use them and sometimes you can only use certain ones depending on the scenario there's a player aid here for every single player, and then there's going to be these tokens here, which will represent quest completion markers. Certain quests in the game will require you to use these, and when you do, after you use a certain number of them, you'll be able to complete those quests, and you'll be able to gain the Great Houses tiles here, which are going to allow you to do some unique abilities throughout the game. These are all of the cards in the game that you will be getting. There is a bunch of new Tier 2 cards that will basically allow you to do a plethora of unique and new and interesting types of gameplay. When you're playing the single player mode, you actually be able to make your own deck of type two cards, which I've already gone ahead and made. And of course, when you play in the base game and the new rules, you're going to get additional unique types of 1v1. So this prosperity of Shalia, or you could play religion and belief, or you could play something like these cell swords and it tells you what cards go into the deck and how you shuffle it and deal them out. But for the most part, after you've made the deck, you shuffle it, you deal out three cards and then the tier one deck or the class one deck, you just shuffle that up and leave it as it stands. This is the trade board. You go ahead and deal out two of these at random or sometimes the specific scenarios will tell you which ones to put on there. As well as when you're playing with the solo mode variant, this is the usurper. There's a normal and a hard mode, gives you their health, that gives you their little uh, rage meter. And when this thing reaches a certain threshold, it will have this character do damaging things to your basically your board here you'll have these locked cards which you'll place in the first third and fourth position of the track and if you're playing with the single player variant you go ahead and flip over one of these cards starting with the class one cards and moving to the class two basically they're going to get more challenging as the game progresses all of these are the tokens in the game whether you use these generals which will increase or reduce your die pips or if you're going to use these health tracker markers increased damage markers Additional die for other characters, minerals, uh, increased health markers here. Uh, you got the any 
tokens, which can be used as any die. You can actually supplement them on certain cards. And then the locked markers, which make you spend a three on a die in order to unlock certain cards when opponents lock them in. The rest of the stuff is just extra. You're going to be getting two of the heroes from this deck here, which is also always going to be shuffled up. And if you're playing with the expanded content, this is some new stuff here, you're going to get these quests here. You're going to go ahead and shuffle this up and deal these guys out. And if you complete these on your turn, depending on the the scenario and the, basically the round, what you're going to be doing is going to gain you these guys here. So for instance, if you have four infantry built in your territory board, you can simply complete this you'll take this card and fill a new one in and they always get filled in when you get one or however maybe you complete this quest destroy an opponent's level two card with infantry when you do that you take one of your little flags and place it on there and the next time you complete this you will put your other flag on there thusly completing it taking the card and gaining the benefit from it now remember if you place a flag on any of these that secures it as being yours so that nobody else can take it if there's no flag on it you can claim it and if they have no flags they're simple one use instant gains and you can use these to either discard them for gold or you can gain the great house as part of the expansion you can take these guys if you pay for them this costs two quests this one here is a golden two quests and this one over here is one quest these are basically going to function very similar to the card on this player board and they will give you either unique passives or unique actives that will cost you die now just like the base game it plays very similar in the solo mode and in the new modes of gameplay where you're going to be purchasing cards you'll be spending gold to buy the uh, tier one and the tier two cards you will be purchasing extra die which you can then use to roll on your action phase and you can buy officers for one mineral per two officers. Everybody will do that. Then you'll go to the building phase. You'll spend currency to build in the top right hand side. It'll tell you the cost to build the different things. All the type ones can be just built, but the type two here are going to require either the same type of building to already have been built on your board or the previous one. So for cavalry, you need infantry and infantry is going to be found in this deck. After you've gone ahead and built all that you can or all that you choose to, remember that you can also pay three to remove these locked spaces. They can be gained by spending gold, and when they're removed, you can place new cards there. You're also able to uh, define cards. Let's see right here, this one. It says defense cards must be used in the front row. So you're going to always play defense cards. When they go uh, up, they're going to be right up here because whenever somebody attacks you, they must attack defense cards first before they attack anything else on your field or even your palace. So after you're done building, you move on to the last phase, which is this phase here, the action phase. And the action phase is you're going to be rolling the die. You'll be assigning the die to your board as well as to the cards here. And then you are going to be basically gaining one gold per type one card or tier one card you defeat of your opponents, these guys here, or you'll gain two for every tier two card you'll defeat of your opponents. And then you can have a maximum of two status effects per type on each card, whether it be bonus to attack, bonus to health, or using maybe these innies or locks. And that's pretty much it. You're going to go through the game round by round, attempting to increase the value of your tableau, placing your die on either these free spaces here or on the cards presented on the board, trying to increase your culture because certain cards will increase your culture or attempting to do damage to your opponent. Remember, you have to do damage to their defenses first, and then you can deal damage to their palace. Their palace has a certain amount of health, and if you remove all of their health, you will win. In the solo mode variant of the game, which is also part of the expansion, you are going to be taking turns back and forth with the AI, except for the build phase, which is basically going to be pretty interesting. The first phase is the purchase phase in which you will function just like normal in the game. But with this guy, when he purchases something, he simply takes this card, he pushes all the rest of them over, and a new card comes out. And after he does that, then they're going to move on to the build phase. You'll build whatever you want. And then the action phase, he will take actions from left to right, doing whatever these things say. Sometimes they'll just say to do damage. Other times they'll say to move this tracker up. When this tracker hits certain points on the board, it'll tell you to do certain things. If it reaches the very end of the board, it will unlock this space. And it's a very powerful, scary space. As the rounds progress, you'll be going from the tier one cards to the tier two. Tier two are obviously more challenging than the tier one cards. And the way you beat this guy is the same way you would normally beat another character, either by doing 15 damage to the usurper, or you can attempt to gain 18 culture on your board before he defeats your palace. 
he is always going to attack your defenses first, then your type 2 buildings or your tier 2 buildings, and then he's going to go for your palace. If he destroys your palace, the game is over and you have lost. And that's pretty much it. Like I said before, expansion is the quests, all of these great houses, the usurper, as well as all of the minion cards and minion decks. And then, of course, there's a ton of new cards in the game that you have the ability to switch in and out of, and all of the different variants for 1v1 and 2v2 play, which give you all of your your own unique decks. Anyway, let's come up and discuss the game, tell you what I think about it, and it's currently on Kickstarter. If you're interested, down below, link in the description. The Great Houses expansion provides a lot of variability to your play for Shaolia. It is going to allow you to play with a ton of different variants as well as the single player mode. Let's go ahead and discuss, first of all, the main aspect of the game, the 1v1. Now, there are about four different types of variants for the 1v1, which basically give you a certain type of tier two decks to put together, and everybody's going to use cards from that deck. Some of them are going to be more warlike, others are going to be more cultural-like, there might be a mix, they might involve defense, they might involve additional gold, or attempting to gain trade spaces. The ability to have more cards is going to be very, very nice. As you can see, there's going to be four different cards uh, for each of the different types, and so that means there is a ton of new combinations. You have the totem here, which can must be attacked first, so it's basically a barricade. It has additional schools on it, as opposed to just being a defense. It's also got the school aspect, which is going to gain you culture. Or maybe you want something a little more aggressive, like the cultists here. Deal three damage, and do one damage to this card whenever it's activated. Really, really powerful. And they go on and on and on. There's a lot of them. And what's really nice about the single player variant of the game is you can choose to make your own tier two deck to fight against the usurper. And I'm sure you could also go ahead and choose to make your own tier two deck when playing 1v1. They just have a lot of variants and choices that you can go ahead and start with. They are a good starting point, and we definitely suggest you use them first. Not only that, but I originally really liked this game just as it stood, so having more content of stuff I already like is great. But when you add additional stuff, more cards, and more unique twists and turns, like for instance the Great Houses now, and the quests, that brings even more to the table. Now you're attempting to complete quests on your turn and defeat your opponent, or gain culture to push yourself to 18. And while you gain quests, you can either spend those quests to get gold in order to produce more on your board, thusly allowing you to kind of gain uh, an advantage. But if you don't want that specific gold advantage, you can take these great houses. Some of them are passive. You can gain a culture whenever a culture card activates on your territory. And it's a passive, it works every round. It's very nice, but it does take two quests. Some quests are a little more challenging than others. It really just depends on what is on your board at the time. But regardless, the quests and the great houses are a nice addition to the game. It's something I would not recommend you not play with. I personally really did enjoy them. And I did enjoy each of the different variants for the 1v1 play. The 2v2 functions very similar to the original game and now there's just more additional things you've added to it and of course like I said previously the houses and of course the quests. The one the one player version of the game now. This is fighting this usurper and it functions like you're playing against somebody else they're just extremely powerful and they focus on all-out attack if you're not defended you're going to lose your tier two buildings you have to have a strong defense you have to make a good and wise deck if you do not make a great tier two deck you'll lose everything that you build rather quickly he will do anywhere from one to about six damage on his turn and it can get even more or her turn i should say uh you can get even more as the game progresses and and we've probably played that four or five times. We've lost every time. Maybe that's because we're not very great at making decks, or maybe it's just extremely challenging. But regardless, you have to be on your toes. You have to see what works and what doesn't work, what combinations are better for the usurper and how you should be fighting against them and what you should be utilizing in order to maintain dominance against that specific character. And of course, remember that they are so heavy on attack that defense is just so required. We went through an entire game and didn't even actually gain any culture or any damage because we kept dealing with having to fight the minions first because they have some defensive units that you have to deal with before you can push through. 
The different types of tier two cards that include different varieties of characteristics, like they're not just defense, like there's a tree specifically that has all of them. Those kind of interact with the other cards as well, because now whenever it says, whenever you activate this type of card, you get this. Well, with the tree, you get everything. Or you can also, of course, utilize the three main power powerhouse cards, like this fortress here. This is what you can put in the tier two deck. It's basically a powerhouse on its, on its own and it can gain you life tokens anytime you, you can place die on here, as well as it has 10 life. So these are great cards to place in there when fighting against the Usurper as well. The quality of the game is phenomenal. The fact that the prototype I have here is something I would expect to see in a finished version tells you a lot. And if I were to recommend you picking up the game, I would also recommend you picking up the deluxified version. All the components are highly power, highly high quality highly high quality and they are very nice all the tokens feel great they're called custom wooden meeples wooden tokens and they work very very well i don't actually own one of the non-deluxified versions so i couldn't tell you what those look like but i can also tell you that the coins in this game feel nice they're heavy they've got that nice shine nice glimmer and it feels good to spend them and of course to gain them throughout the game Everything about the deluxified version of this game is excellent. The game overall is a ton of fun to play. The expansion is a nice addition with not only more of the same, but with some unique little twists and turns involving the great houses and the quests, and of course the solo mode variant, which I would just say is extremely difficult. For those of you who don't like aggressive Machi Koro style games, this might not be for you. This game is definitely aggressive 1v1, 2v2 style game. And of course it provides a lot of variants as well. And if it's something that sounds interesting after hearing all about this i would definitely suggest taking a look down below at the kickstarter it's a game i'll be playing quite a for quite a while longer i'm going to keep this one in my collection this one's super close to getting my seal of approval i really 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 enjoy it and i think you guys should definitely take a look at it let me know what you guys think down below links in the description for you to pick up the game and for our previous video and tell me whether or not this is something that you would want to pick up okay thank you for watching outro Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out those other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Link in the description for the game shall lay out warring states and of course the expansion Great Houses, something you should definitely suggest, I suggest you check out and let me know what you think. Also, you can check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our giveaway, Kelly's Corner, is up there for another couple days. And if you're interested in picking up the four great family games, go ahead and do so. Look forward to seeing one of her videos out very, very soon. See you guys at 6.30 p.m. PST every week. Wednesday for our live stream where you can win games and play games just like this one down below. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I look forward to warring in your states with you next time.